four reasons why you might be bloating and the solutions. Hey loves, it's A back on your screen with another one. Hope you're all well. Today we're gonna to be doing another nutrition video. Thanks so much for all of you who commented and liked the last. We're gonna be talking about bloating. This is a topic that a family member asked me about. I'm like, you know what? That's gonna be my next nutrition video. So you guys wanna come up with a topic for the next one, you know where to leave it. So this one, I broken down into four segments four reasons why you might be bloating and the solutions. I know there's more than four reasons, but for sake of time, let's just keep it down to these. The way I see it when it comes to nutrition or actually just health and wellness in general, you always wanna find the root of the problem and then look for the solution. I find it hard when you don't know why to try to course correct. And I think this is the best way of looking at health and wellness. Instead of kind of thinking, okay, I'm this, so I'm gonna do this, pinpointing what it is. Is it an allergen? Do you have an intolerance? Is it that time of the month? Are you not feeling yourself? Everything is about getting to know yourself. And nutrition is like personal finance. I love when my cousin said this to me last week, personal finance is just that personal. No one's ever framed it to me that way. And then when I was thinking, you know what? Nutrition is exactly the same. One thing that I missed about being in school was when my profs would say, nutrition is different for everybody. We have this thing called bioavailability, which I'll talk about more in depth in another episode. And pretty much what it is, is your body's ability to absorb nutrients, which is different from another person. So all that recommended intake daily value stuff is cool. But depending on how your body operates, the same apple you eat may impact your body differently from the next person. And I want you to keep that in mind as you're getting to know yourself on your health journey. So with all of that said, let's get into the four reasons why you may be bloating and the solutions. The first and most obvious is water retention. And you'll know that you're bloated because of water retention. You'll feel tight and just like, you know, it's a quintessential feeling of bloating. You probably clicked this video because you've experienced some kind of bloating, but if you haven't before, bloating is that feeling when you feel expanded, distended, like your belly is a beach ball. I hate that feeling personally, and I've had it for all four of these reasons, so I can speak from experience. But when you are retaining water, it's probably because your sodium intake is too high. So what do you do? Obviously, you're gonna lower your sodium intake and you still increase your water intake because your body needs to flush things out. It's not always salt's fault that you're bloating, but a lot of times a simple fix is to lower your salt intake and that way your body's not gonna hold on to water trying to flush it out. Oftentimes your kidneys are working to level out the toxins and because of that, there may be other responses in other organs that are creating your body to have that response and puff up like a puff for fish so that's the easiest fix for it but you also have to know your body well enough to know that the symptoms of it is in fact because you have too much sodium if it isn't sodium it might be reason number two and I got a solution for you the solution though is a double whammy it's not just nutrition because it's never just about what you eat don't let anybody ever tell you that it's never just what you eat so if you are intaking too much fat you're gonna have that. And the thing about being a human is nature made us this way where fat stores around the midsection first and it's the last to go. And even me, a skinny mini, has that problem too. So you know what I do? I do core activating workouts. Not just yoga, which does activate the core depending what pose you're in, but I will focus. As much as I hate a core workout, I will focus on the core until it is gone. And you have to couple that with, of course, reducing your fat intake because it's not one without the other. You can't eat like trash and expect your body to be banging, even if you're working out. You have to have that balance. I don't believe in cheat days. I believe in cheat times. So if you choose to eat bad for lunch, eat well for dinner. If you choose to be a little lackadaisical for breakfast, eat clean for the rest of the day. But we'll talk about that more if you're interested. So when it comes to intaking fat or salt, Keep them things at a minimal in general, but especially if you're bloating and you find yourself too often feeling just, ugh, 
in that area. The third reason we touched on this a little bit in last week's episode is inflammation. Inflammation is that silent trickster. It's just that thing that's in the cut causing problems in different part of your body all the time. And you know you're bloating because of inflammation because your body's gonna tell you so. You'll feel the pain. If you feel bloating in your midsection, it's probably a sign that you might wanna up your spices. I talked about this in last week's episode as spices are so crucial and it's just such an easy fix. You just put them on the food you're eating and they have so many benefits, including helping your body with its inflammation response. Usually inflammation is your first sign that your body might be trying to fight an ailment that will further progress to a disease disorder. You have to pay mind because these things can go from bad to worse. If you find that you're inflamed in that area, not just increasing certain spices like turmeric and black pepper and cloves that will help just neutralize that area. You also want to have foods that are not going to irritate. So when I say spices, I don't necessarily mean spicy food. I used to work at the restaurant. People would be like, no salt, no pepper, no garlic. I'm like, what? Some people really can't take anything. And I pray for them because I can't imagine a life without spice. That doesn't sound like a life to me. But if you're not a spice person and you don't like it spicy, because spice, spicy is not the best when you feel that kind of pain, then I would suggest having things like a probiotic that will help with the healthy gut bacteria and regain the balance that's supposed to be in that area. When it comes to inflammation in general, and this is just for the whole body, your best defense is finding the root of the inflammation and then bringing it down, not just popping in an Advil and calling a day. You always wanna solve the problem at the core, not the symptoms, you know what I mean? Fourth and final for today, why you might be bloated is you need to clean it up. I saved the most grimy for last. Yes, it is true that if you don't eat clean, you get clogged up. So what you gonna do? Fiber, both soluble and insoluble. If you haven't heard these terms before, soluble, I always think of slows. <laughs> it's a fiber that slows down the process of digestion by which helping you slow down your absorption of sugar fat, which also helps if you're pre-diabetic or just in general. Then insoluble, it doesn't soak up water, so it kind of sweeps out and it actually speeds up things too. So if you find that you're constipated, it's gonna soften your stools and make it easier to pass. Also because of that sweeping action, it's gonna help flush out anything that might be stuck on the walls of your colon. Having both of these regularly is gonna keep you regular, which is gonna help with inflammation and it's gonna help with your fat, sugar, and salt absorption too. Keeping on top of your fiber intake is essential for overall gut and digestive tract health. Insoluble fiber, as I said, is not just good for cleaning out your system, but helping you with satiety, i.e. feeling full, because it adds bulk intensity to eating and what you're flushing out because it doesn't break down in that sense in your body. Soluble fiber, it does bind to water and it becomes a gel that is really good for helping slow down the process. Oh, this is good. As you may or may not know, different parts of your colon digestive tract absorb different nutrients. So if you were just flushing things out or things are taking way too long and backing up, different parts of your intestines that are supposed to be involved in absorbing different nutrients aren't getting the time or chance to, which means the food that you're eating may not be doing what it's supposed to do. Having fiber and being regular allows this process to happen more naturally and efficiently. To put it crudely, if you're backed up, you're gonna also have a little bulge because it's sticking to the walls. So if you do a juice cleanse for a day, I don't recommend doing these too often in a year, it will make a difference. I didn't think it did until I did one a couple years ago. Just don't do strenuous exercises that day. But if you're not a juice cleanse type of person, don't worry, just uptaking your fiber, like I said, it will do the same thing in just a little bit longer time. When it comes to nutrition, every time I always say variety and moderation. And then on top of that, nothing is an overnight fix. Things will take some time because your body has to recalibrate to it, which we can always discuss more if you want to. There are so many ways and directions we can take this. One thing I love about nutrition is 
the industry is always evolving and like i said earlier nutrition is personal to you so do your research too and make sure that you're always looking within before you seek information externally because your body will always give you the keys and signs you need to know about where you need to go with your health journey so that's all i got for today's video i hope that i said something that helps if you have anything to add leave it down below let me know and until next time stay safe stay sane stay blessed love and later